Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first, uh, got some warning conditions going on, or will be coming up out here uh, this evening, St. Lawrence Island and the uh, Yukon Delta up to western Seward Peninsula. Uh, winter storm warning kicks in this evening and overnight tonight uh, for snow, blowing snow and uh, several inches reducing visibilities and uh, occasionally uh, local blizzard conditions associated with that. And up here, the Kobuk Valley, Kotzebue Sound, Noatak Valley, and up to the western Arctic coast, those, uh, that winter storm warning is out for beginning tomorrow or late tonight into tomorrow morning and then throughout much of the day on Sunday for the same conditions, gusty winds, snow blowing snow and local blizzard conditions. Could see anywhere from four to eight inches of snow here on the southern slopes of the Western Brooks Range area in those upslope areas. Otherwise, we've got winter weather advisories out here for the uh, lower and mid Yukon Valley, Northern Cuscombe Valley areas. Uh, that's for a combination of snow and freezing rain. Uh, it'll be a uh, snow and gusty winds with snow, uh, locally blowing snow, reducing visibilities, and temperatures warm up, warm air aloft comes in, snow changes to freezing rain. Could be a tenth of an inch uh, of glaze with that when that happens before it changes over to rain. And so winter weather advisories are out uh, for these areas uh, late tonight in through uh, much of the day on Sunday. And on the satellite imagery here, this is the uh, system that's going to be causing the fuss out here over the western interior again later tonight and Sunday with the uh, gusty winds, lots of moisture flowing northward, warm air on those southerly winds uh, from south to north, higher pressure, ridge actually ridge axis here along the west coast, lower pressure out there to the west, and then that southerly flow pulling all the moisture on up to the north. We've got some banding of the cirrus clouds here coming into the central interior areas on the uh, east side of the ridge axis aloft, and then pretty good day here over much of the eastern interior down to the north Gulf Coast. Had some uh, areas of low clouds, fog, and flurries up uh, anywhere over the Tanana Valley, north of the Alaska Range. They're kind of scattered around. Nothing uh, too heavy as far as uh, kind of a stable pattern, just uh, making lower flying conditions. But a pretty nice day here across the southeast coast as uh, well under basically dry northerly flow. And rolling this uh, through again, we've got uh, moisture dropping southward here in the northwest Canada, the northwest territories, and the trailing edge of that coming back, just clipping the eastern Beaufort Sea coast there with a uh, little bit of uh, light snow flurries and fog during the afternoon today. This band right through here bringing heavier conditions up here to the northwest areas, uh, spreading into the Barrow area back to the west, uh, Wainwright, down to Point Lay, seeing some pretty good snow today, and visibility as low as three quarters of a mile in snow and fog and back out to the west so you can see the back edge of the main frontal boundary right through here just west of St. Paul Island down to just near Nikolsky at picture time which is uh, latest shot here is 1 p.m. Uh, today Saturday and then other trough back out through here bringing uh, some showers down to about uh, 8 Akanatka just barely reaching them just trailing edge of that trough into that area and then a little colder temperatures uh, Precipitation mostly in the form of wet snow down towards sea level around Shimia and at two. On the chart today, here's the uh, front right through here in the gusty southeast winds of anywhere from 30 to 50 miles an hour out ahead of that front. Uh, rain of the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutian areas, uh, kind of an occasional mixture of rain and snow for the peripheral offs there along and south of that warm front. Up to the north, snow, but that's still south of St. Lawrence Island as of mid-afternoon anyway, but edging in toward the coast there. Uh, increasing winds along the coast along with the clouds with precipitation mainly back to the west here about uh, no farther east than roughly uh, Sand Point, uh, not quite to Chignik yet. Just some high clouds in over Kodiak and up over the west central interior. And again this trough bringing the areas of snow to the uh, western, Ar western Arctic coast that's uh, slipping up and over the top of this big area of high pressure over the centered over the eastern interior there at 1042 millibars, very stable pattern so a lot of uh, considerable low clouds, fog, and uh, areas of flurries here over the uh, Tanana Valley, back down toward the southeast, actually that extends into western Canada, but uh, snowfall amounts pretty light, and uh, mostly just some areas of uh, low clouds trapped under that ridge, but uh, offshore flow here, keeping it mostly clear across the Panhandle, North Gulf Coast, into Prince William Sound, 
another strong high down to the south. So that's going to uh, direct most of this moisture south to north, keeps funneling the warm air northward, but the entire pattern is shifting. So this front will be pushing eastward. And uh, for tonight, uh, high begins to retreat a little bit there, still pretty strong over the Yukon, 1,044 millibars with this front having a weakening effect on the ridge and the ridge having a weakening effect on the front, but holding together enough to bring those uh, winter storm uh, locally blizzard conditions into the western interior in those warning areas tonight, later tonight, and especially uh, up here to the northwest, that'll be tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, no change in the interior tonight, just a kind of a thickening, lowering cloud condition here in the west. You won't notice much of a change at all over the eastern interior with uh, low clouds, fog, and flurries around in some areas there, mostly from about the oh, southern Yukon Flats down to the north side of the Alaska Range. South of there, though, mostly fair, mostly clear skies, light winds on down the southeast coast. A little brisk on the northerlies there. Channel areas could see a little uh, kind of gusty winds, especially over the southern southeast coast, but uh, that'll be uh, gradually diminishing throughout the day tomorrow. And back out to the west, uh, next system edging its way in toward the western Aleutians, which on Sunday, tomorrow, Good winds, gale force winds, rain, warmer temperatures again spreading up into the southern Bering Sea, eastward to the uh, eastern Aleutians. This front uh, washes out as it moves into the interior here and still quite an area of uh, precipitation anywhere in, from rain, snow, freezing rain to mostly snow back up here to the northwest areas. And uh, I think by tomorrow afternoon any blowing snow will be pretty well minimized, more of just maybe drifting. But uh, dry weather continues over the eastern interior. Some moisture may slip up into south central Alaska during the afternoon hours, uh, but not making it much past uh, or to Prince William Sound. Stays fair, dry, sunshine, southeast coast, cool, right up over the eastern interior. And then for Monday, that whole system washes out. Just some flurries left behind over the eastern interior. Next system drives northward, the low center way back out to the west of this front, weakening, especially down across the Alaska Peninsula. It's a narrow band of rain and barely even small craft advisory winds, if that, into Bristol Bay, but quite a bit of wind here coming up into the uh, northern Bering Sea, much warmer temperatures spreading northward, rain mixed with snow all the way up into the Chukchi Sea. And for lows tonight, uh, below zero here over the eastern interior, but uh, mostly warmer than minus 20, minus teens, Yukon Flats to minus 15 over the Copper River Basin. And then, of course, the very warm temperatures, mild mid-30s over the Alaska Peninsula, lower 30s up there towards St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula. And for the uh, highs tomorrow afternoon, single numbers, the eastern interior stays the coldest, up to near 40 over the Yukon Delta, mid to upper 30s, Cuscoom Delta. See above freezing temperatures spreading northward into Kotzebue Sound, all the way up to Point Hope there, and even the western Arctic coast edging above freezing, and stays mostly in the upper 20s to mid 30s over the Panhandle. Lows the next morning, uh, chilly here for the southeast coast, anywhere from 10 to 20. A little milder out along the coast though, but uh, pretty chilly. And Still staying below zero over the eastern interior and uh, mild mid to upper 20s here in the west, teens for the Arctic coast and then the highs for the afternoon on Monday, mid to upper teens here to lower 20s say around Eagle Northway to uh, 30s to lower 40s over the Panhandle and out west uh, mostly in the mid to upper 30s to near 40 degrees. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On to uh, aviation, we've got a band of IFR, so those you that front, uh, moving on to the southwest coast here down across the uh, Alaska Peninsula and just reaching the Aleutian Range, but still southwest of Kodiak Island, and that extends back up across St. Lawrence Island. A uh, good break of VFR, then some more marginal VFR associated with the next storm coming in out west and lingering IFR up over the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Marginal VFR early on here along the north side of the central eastern Alaska range and uh, possibly the White Mountains as well. And then for the uh, afternoon forecast, you can see that next storm really makes a good jog to the north and east with IFR Sunday afternoon spreading uh, not quite to the Pribilofs, but almost close to Nikolsky there and uh, about uh, look for some improvement behind the front there. Uh, Seenland's visibility wise for ADAC, IFR spraying into Kodiak with that weakening front, just marginal VFR over the interior here with uh, IFR south coast of the Seward Peninsula and also the uh, upslope areas of the Northwest Mountains here and then VFR for the North Slope, VFR through the Eastern Interior down across the Panhandle. 
And moving on to Monday morning, mostly VFR here over the interior, just a narrow band of marginal VFR along the border there with most of the moisture now off into Canada. Good VFR down across the Panhandle, IFR here, Cusquam Delta around Cape Newenham, northward into just south of the Bering Strait, covering much of the northern Bering Sea, and then better conditions here over the southern Bering and the Aleutians, but some IFR there for the Fox Islands. And in the afternoon, this area progresses eastward, pushing inland there, uh, IFR, Western Brooks Range, southward into the Yukon Cusquam Valley, or the lower valley and the deltas down into northern Bristol Bay with marginal VFR right up to the Alaska Range. Good VFR holding here over the eastern interior to the Arctic coast and down across the Panhandle. Passes Anatovic and Athigan, both marginal VFR again. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, starting out VFR trending toward marginal, possibly becoming IFR in the uh, uh, western entrances. And then for Rainy, starting out VFR tomorrow and at some point in the afternoon becoming marginal. Uh, later in the afternoon, better chance of that happening. And then for Windy, VFR the entire day. Same forecast for Isabel, Mentasta, good VFR tomorrow. Great flying for Tanita as well. Portage staying VFR. Chilkoot and White, VFR. Looking at the freezing levels, uh, a southerly flow here with the upper level ridge now shifting off to the east. So eight to 8,000 feet here, the warm ridge here of the higher freezing levels right over the west central interior, about 6,000 feet. And then a little bit higher, 6 to 8,000 feet there just south of Kodiak. Colder air with 2,000 feet south of the Aleutians. And then good northerly flow keeping the freezing levels at the surface there along the north Gulf Coast, right along the outer coastline of the Panhandle. And for icing, we've got... Uh, a weakening band of icing, but holding together enough for uh, area, uh, pretty good air areas of light rime icing with just spotty, considerable, moderate rime here uh, in the orange shaded areas. None to the east, on down the southeast coast, no icing expected. And then another bigger batch coming in with that next uh, strong storm entering the uh, Lucians and Southwest Bering. And for the winds aloft, here's that upper level ridge uh, tomorrow, right through about this area, shifting inland there again along the axis that we saw the high freezing levels. Strong northerly flow here coming down out of the Arctic, right into the northern panhandle of the Gulf of Alaska, about 130 knots there. Southeast 60 to 80, one band here across the east central Bering Sea, and then a stronger band southerly at about 130 out over the western Bering and the Aleutians. 9,000 foot winds, or yeah, southwest flow here. Strongest here in the west, up to uh, 35 to 40 knots, some cases as high as 50 knots there across the Noatak Valley and 20 knots eastern Beaufort Sea, otherwise 20 to 30 over the eastern interior, southeast coast, northwest, 25 to 35. And then the strongest winds out here over the Aleutians, up to as high as 75 knots there across the Adak Atka area. Same pattern, 3,000 feet, 50 to 70 knot winds over the central eastern Aleutians with that. Southwesterlies, 35 to 45 here in the west. Lighter down to 15 here under that ridge axis. So a lot lighter winds at 3,000 feet than 9,000 here, especially over the panhandle. And turbulence wise, uh, Occasional moderate chop, this will be kind of uh, diminishing from north to south in the daytime, but could be probably higher level turbulence with that uh, strong northerly jet coming down uh, right out of the north there. In fact, there likely will be high level turbulence there. Otherwise, uh, below 6,000 feet here, four to 6,000 feet. Occasional widespread moderate chop there from the Western Brooks Range southward all the way to the Aleutian Range into Shelikoff Strait, as well as the Aleutians. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. As you well know, you can get forecast information for any day of the week. Today, tonight, tomorrow, out to six or seven days. It includes the high and low temperature, the wind direction, the chance of rain or snow in your part of Alaska. But did you know that there is information available to forecast out to two weeks? So the question is, how would you use that information? And here to answer that question today and tell us a lot more about climate services from the U.S. National Weather Service Alaska region is Rick Toman. He's the program manager for the Climate Science and Services. And uh, Rick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Dave. How would we use information that is out to two weeks instead of just the high and low and the chance of rain? Well, Dave, as we move out in time, of course, uh, forecasts become more uncertain. So as we move into that second week from now, we're not looking at specific uh, highs or lows or precipitation mounts at any given place. Uh, what we can do with the state of the science at this point is get a handle on patterns 
Uh, so we can uh, say things like um, increased chances for uh, stormy weather in the Bering Sea uh, in two weeks, or we've been in a cold weather pattern, looks like uh, eight to ten days from now that pattern's going to change. Those are the kind of forecasts uh, that we can currently make in that second week. So you're increasing lead time for perhaps big or small weather events and telling us the likelihood of uh, maybe uh, more coastal storms or wind events in some areas? Uh, those are the kinds of things that, um, that we hope to be able to, to let Alaskans know in the, in the second week forecast. And if you have an activity or an event that you would find that kind of advance notice useful, whether it's moving stuff off of the beach, whether to go out hunting or to come back from camp, those kind of decisions. The week two uh, provides uh, the opportunity uh, for you to get a handle on that kind of information. Okay, what other type of weather impacts that we're familiar with might Alaskans use climate services for? Well, in the forecast realm, we can go uh, provide some information from this uh, week two, say the eight to 14 day period uh, on out uh, to the uh, monthly and even seasonal time scale. Now those monthly seasonal forecasts are still kind of uh, just really very much pattern dependent and the amount of detail that we can provide at this point is still uh, pretty limited generally uh, indications of how temperature and precipitation will fall in, in uh, maybe above normal, below normal kind of range. Uh, but in the week two period, uh, we can uh, be considerably more specific than that as far as the general patterns and the really the impacts on Alaskans. Okay, so we would be talking about generalizations there that would, would tell us that the, the period might be more stormy, might be more hot, more dry, more cold, and th situations like that. That's correct. So we're not going to be able to say in which community, uh, for instance, there's the threat of coastal flooding, but we can, we'll, can often be able to tell we're moving into a pattern that would be conducive to big Bering Sea storms. So if you're in an area that that could potentially uh, impact you, you'll want to pay attention uh, to uh, the weather forecast. Okay. Now every day and every hour of the day, the National Weather Service is working on a forecast for the next day. But how do you start your forecast process for that extended period that goes out beyond seven days? Well, the way things work right now, we start off with the expected general flow pattern uh, for Alaska and, and the whole world, really, we, and then we narrow that down to Alaska. So we start off with the basic computer model forecast. There's uh, quite a few different computer models that we look at, bring those together. And then another important part of that is we as attempt to assess the confidence. Um, the reality is often two weeks away, the computer models are very divergent. They have lots of different solutions. And that's an indication that we don't have much confidence. Uh, but when we see uh, more agreement in that time frame, and when that agreement is a pattern that will be potentially very impactful for Alaska or is a big change from what we've been in, that's when we can then take that expected pattern, we have computer models forecasting it, we've assessed the confidence, now we can move that forward. How, using our experience as Alaskan weather forecasters, how does that uh, typically play out for Alaska? So is this a stormy pattern for the Bering Sea? Is this an extra rainy period for Southeast? Is this the kind of pattern that generates uh, strong winds potentially in, in the Anchorage Bowl? Is this a deep cold pattern for the interior? All of those are the kind of things that we're looking at in these large scale patterns. That's very different than telling you that the winds on 10 days from now are gonna be gusting to 120 on the hillside. We're looking for patterns, not, um, not the very specific information that the Weather Service will then hone in on as the event gets closer. So the idea is to keep the five, six, seven day forecast the same where you are getting the standard high and low temperature and the chance of wind or rain, but further out you get a broad general forecast, but as the time gets closer to that event, we'll get a lot more specific. That's correct. Okay, very good. So how can people use this information if I am out in the bush and I want to see is a coastal storm expected in my region or is a chance for that improving? over the next uh, two to three weeks. Where could I go to get information like that? When we see that uh, potentially impactful or a big change in the weather is coming uh, eight to 14 days out, 
Uh, typically, we will uh, start to highlight that on uh, the Weather Service Facebook site. Um, we might produce a YouTube video uh, highlighting that, linking that on our Facebook site. Mm -hmm. um, so often, we don't, at this point, we don't have much to say in that because we're really looking for those forecasts of opportunities. But one thing we can say very likely as uh, we go through the next uh, two or three years, there'll be more and more of this kind of forecast information available in that week two time frame. Okay, and something that emergency managers and city planners and uh, folks in villages might be interested in keeping an eye out for, uh, looking for that information to be headlined, uh, whether that's on social media or perhaps uh, through uh, uh, the National Weather Service channels there to get information from, like, uh, from you to make better plans a little bit uh, longer term and make uh, better preparations in the event that things become a little bit more unsettled. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Climate Services uh, with the National Weather Service of Alaska Region is talking to uh, the state of Alaska every week, uh, apprising them of uh, that uh, two-week outlook. And, um, and uh, on the social media side, uh, we uh, are working to uh, keep Alaskans informed so that when we think we have uh, some confidence in a high impact or a big change, mm -hmm. to uh, that's the best way right now for folks to um, uh, find out about that. Uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, so uh, uh, stay tuned to uh, your National Weather Service. Very good, a developing program. Rick Toman with the National Weather Service Alaska Region. He's a Climate Science and Services Program Manager. Thanks so much for joining us again, Rick, and I hope to have you back again soon. Great, thanks, Dave. For another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, uh, strong southerly winds here uh, continuing. You can see got open water now poking through the Bering Strait uh, into the southern Chukchi Sea, also on the north side of uh, the Seward Peninsula areas. Another swath here in over southern Norton Sound and down the Yukon Delta coast, and uh, really uh, kind of getting beaten back here. Cuscom Bay or South of Nunavak Island on into uh, Bristol Bay and that's going to continue over the next few days here with those uh, southerly winds out in that area. Still a lot of ice here over central and uh, on up into northern Cook Inlet. And the marine forecasts, north winds 25, higher gusts, northern Lynn Canal. Same thing for Stevens Passage right out of the north all the way down to Clarence Strait. North 25 here on the south coast, otherwise northwest 15, getting more variable and lighter up along the north coast. And then the outlook for Monday, east at 10, so still kind of a light variable wind pattern here, but northwest from the central coast all the way down, light northwest, 10 knots, 6 foot seas, southeast 15 for Clarence Strait, and kind of a light variable wind pattern now shaping up over the central and northern inside waters. Prince William Sound tomorrow, light easterlies, and light uh, east-northeast winds from the north Gulf Coast here, 15 knots, uh, highest here on the west part of that, those zones, or the western north Gulf Coast, southeast 20 for the Barrens, East 25, Kachemak Bay, northeast 15, southern Cook Inlet, and even lighter north of the Forelands. Outlook for Monday, light northeasterlies at 10 for Cook Inlet, east 10, Kachemak Bay, uh, I'm sorry, west at 10 for Kachemak Bay, and westerlies here, Barren Islands, into the all of the North Gulf Coast, and light west winds for Prince William Sound, two foot seas. Kodiak Island tomorrow, east southeast 25 to 30, small craft advisories there, seas up to 11 feet. 15-foot seas here, Sitkanak to uh, Castle Cape with 30 knots southerlies in behind the front. West, southwest 25 for the peninsula, south winds 30 knots, 8-foot seas for Bristol Bay. And then southeast on Monday, 25 knots there, 6-foot seas and southerlies, gale force southerlies here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula at 35 knots. And then Sitkanak to uh, Castle Cape that way, but anyway, that zone southwest 20 and Kodiak Island, 15-knot winds. Then for the uh, Aleutians here, we've got storm force winds ahead of that front coming up to about 50 knots there uh, from roughly, uh, well, ADAC here and then over toward uh, Nikiski, Fox Islands, 35 to 40 south-southeast and good 40 to 45 knot winds from the east-southeast out over much of the western Aleutians. And then for uh, Monday, they'll swing around to the west-southwest, good stiff breeze there, 40 knots with seas near 30 feet. And 30-foot uh, seas here south side of the adak atka Islands areas with 40 to 45 knots southwest winds there. And uh, gales extend all the way across on Alaska Island where they turn south at 35 to 40 knots with 16 to 20-foot seas. Southwest coast tomorrow, southwest winds, except for the Pervolov, so they'll be out of the south. 30 knots, 13-foot seas there, southwest uh, 
25 St. Matthew Island, a stiff 30 knot southwest breeze there for the southwest coast, and gales in store for the St. Lawrence Island area. Next day, those turn southerly at about 35 knots. Now we've got 40 knot winds here for the southwest coast. Seas about 14 feet, and uh, seas approaching 30 feet here over the Bering Sea, about 25 feet for the Pribilofs with those 40 knot southerlies. Up along the Beaufort Sea coast, uh, tomorrow, gale warnings here from uh, Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, and then small brisk wind advisories here for the west coast, and those winds diminish as you head east down to 10 knots out of the east for the uh, extreme east side. And then on Monday, they'll swing around to the west at 15, southwest 15 for the central coast, then start picking up again, but uh, not quite as strong as tomorrow, south 20 on the western Arctic coast, and then from Cape Beaufort to the Wales area. Winds mostly southeast at about 30 knots there, so brisk wind advisories in those zones. And for tonight, again, this uh, front pushing inland here, low pressure pushing northwest in across the northern Bering Sea with uh, snow blowing snow and winter weather warnings out for St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula, Yukon Delta Coast uh, moving inland with winter weather advisories tomorrow or warnings again for local blizzard conditions will be popping up here up in the northwest. And then uh, freezing rain in the forecast here for the uh, uh, Yukon Delta, lower and mid Yukon Valley areas, as well as the Delta there, possibly in the northern Cusquam Bay. That'll be later on once the front pushes in, as we'll see for tomorrow. Uh, begins to break up here, but still a fair amount of moisture. So areas of uh, rain, snow, freezing rain, sleet here, especially south. And that'll be mostly just rain, Kodiak Island to the southern Kenai Peninsula areas. Could see some moisture slip into Cook Inlet, light moisture. And then staying fair over the eastern interior, right on down the southeast coast, strong high pressure, keeping it dry and cool there. And that'll continue. But uh, see a few more clouds coming in on Monday in those areas. Next storm moves northward, bulk of the energy heading up to the northeast over the northern bearing. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>